All right, what's up guys? Today I'm testing out a total disk failure and a RAID rebuild using my Synology DS718 Plus. And it's currently in a RAID 1 build. And basically we are going to simulate a complete disk failure and see how long a rebuild is and what the performance looks like after disk failure. And so if we go into DSM, we can see right here that I've gotten really close to filling up this volume. And what we're gonna do is we're basically just going to rip a disk out. And then I can also go into Storage Manager and I'll show the drives that I'm using. They're both just shuck drives out of external NASes. So we're not gonna get that good of performance. One's a Western Digital and one's a Seagate. And I'm just gonna rip one of them out. And then we're going to do a RAID rebuild with it and see how the performance looks. And so I'm actually gonna go through and actually have a Blackmagic speed test up to one, get the performance before, and two, to actually see what happens to the performance as soon as you rip a disk out. Now this is in a RAID 1 configuration, which means we should not see a significant hit to write performance, and we might see some hit to read performance, but it's not going to be nearly as bad as the performance hit to a RAID 5 configuration, as there's no parity bit math that has to be completed by the disk station. And so it shouldn't be too bad, but we'll go ahead and start off the Blackmagic speed test. All right, and so we can see just like that, I've ripped the drive out and the NAS is still operating completely as usual. Although now I just don't have any fault protection. And interestingly enough, if you look at this Blackmagic speed test, I think I'm actually getting slightly better performance on the write speeds due to the fact that this drive was probably the slower of the two and might have actually been slowing the whole thing down. Once again, these are two just shucked drives that I'm using in this kind of test bed unit that I've set up for myself. And so really the performance is kind of random compared to something like a good solid NAS drive. All right, so now let's go into DSM and see what's happened. So it says volume one has been degraded and it's giving us a bunch of warnings. And if you set up your Synology Quick Connect, you're gonna be getting an email from it, which is very nice. And so once I pulled that drive out, you can hear in the video probably that the NAS started beeping. And so to turn that off, you go into control panel, power, and then under BP control, if it's currently beeping, it'll tell you the reason for the current beep and you can click beep off and it will stop beeping. It's a really great feature to have. And I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of hard to find when you're trying to do it quickly. All right, so now our volumes are degraded, right? But since we're in a RAID 1 configuration, we still have one perfectly working drive and there's really no performance decrease. If any, there's a slight performance increase. So now let's go back into Storage Manager and see what our volume looks like. So it's giving us this warning and it says that there's an available slot and that our volume is just degraded. Every single one of these menus is telling us that it is degraded. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and just plop this drive right back in and we're going to be able to repair it. One other thing to note, the DS718 Plus actually supports hot swapping, so I do not have to shut down my NAS to do this. So as it boots up, it's going to pop up into an available slot. And so now, as you can see here, it is listed as an unused drive. So let's go ahead and use it. We're going to go into storage pool, and this is where we can repair our degraded storage pool. So it's storage pool one, and all you have to do here is go into action and repair. It is then gonna pop up with this menu, allowing you to choose which drive to repair. So we're just going to click next and it's going to repair it. And so one thing I would recommend doing before starting off your repair is actually to back up any of your really critical files because it's in an integrated state and really there's a lot of unknowns here. And so you want to just make sure you've got a good clean backup of your data just in case anything happens. Once you've made your backup, you can just go ahead and click apply. And so right now it's actually repairing the disk. We can go into resource monitor. And if we go into the disk section, we can see the utilization. So drive one 
is that good drive that did not get pulled out and drive two was the drive that was pulled out. And so it's reading a bunch of data from the first drive and writing a bunch of data to the second drive. And it's also at the same time going through and doing a parity check to make sure that all the data on drive one is actually good before putting it back. This is because I'm using BTRFS. So now with this, let's go ahead and see what kind of performance we can get using Blackmagic speed test again. And so from the Blackmagic speed test run, it's looking like there's no performance decrease, and that's due to really two reasons. One, it's a RAID 1 configuration, so all it's got to do is clone this drive, so it's really not going to take that long. And two, I've also got it set up to lower the impact on system resources during a RAID rebuild, which I would recommend turning on. If you don't know how to turn that on, just go into DSM, Storage Manager, Storage Pool, Configurations, and you want to do this for really two reasons. The first is it's better for your disks, and while your volume's in a degraded state, your disks are at risk, because another failure a lot of time could mean total loss of data. And another reason why is though it will take much longer to actually rebuild the disk, during that time, you're not going to see a horrible performance decrease if you've got to use your NAS during this time. So I would really recommend turning that on unless you've got a good reason not to. And so just like that, it is now repairing. I started a timer as soon as this rebuild started. And so once this video is done, I'll go through and show how long it took for this rebuild. All right. All right. And so now it's the next weekend. But overall, the repair took about 13 hours, which is really not that bad. That is, however, just 1.5 terabytes of data, which is honestly not that much. It also was a RAID 1 configuration, which made it incredibly easy to repair. Really, all the Synology had to do was directly copy the data from the good drive to the drive that was being repaired. And that is incredibly easy to do, and so it was very quick. In a RAID 5 configuration, you actually have to worry about parity math which gets very complicated. That means for larger RAID 5 arrays, there are stories about those rebuilds taking a week just to do. And that's part of the reason why a lot of people recommend using RAID 6 or SHR2. Once you get above about seven drives, you really want to start looking into that because the probability that a second drive will fail while the first one is being rebuilt actually gets quite high because these repairs are actually quite stressing on the drives. But in reality, it just comes down to your backup strategy and how important the data is to you. If these were home videos from your childhood that are irreplaceable, you probably also are going to want them backed up somewhere else. However, if this is just a bunch of TV shows you've recorded from over the air, it might be okay that there is a 1% probability that you lose all that data. But really, that's a choice you need to make. And so Synology has made repairing a drive really incredibly easy. Honestly, you just throw the drive in and click repair and you're pretty much on your way. But don't forget to back things up first because you never know what's going to happen during a rebuild. All right, well, that's all I've got for you. Go ahead and put any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And also, by the way, I've started up spacerex.co where I'm also dual making a lot of these tutorials. So go check out the site. I'll put a link in the description and I could always use feedback on it. This is the first site I've ever actually built and it's been a really fun experience. I think I'm actually going to start doing a lot more WordPress tutorials, especially when it comes to AWS, because AWS is honestly awesome. It's been really fun to mess around with. All right, well, that's it. I hope this was useful. Go ahead and have a good one. Bye.